Okay. Good morning. So I'd like to, first of all, I want to thank Limo Anywhere and Full Steam for joining us today. Uh, I felt it was really important for all of you to get some information about uh, the credit card processing LA Pay. And Michael is gracious enough to join us today and walk us through. Um, like I said, I'm going to, we're recording for the rest of the membership who can't make it today and definitely put your questions in the, in the chat box. So I believe our presenters today are Michael Tarantino and Michael is the senior payments rep at Full Steam and Brendan Eadley will be joining him and uh, everyone knows Brendan. Uh, he is the director of product marketing for Limo Anywhere. And we also have Sean Arena here. Uh, who needs no introduction? Well, if you want one, and, and James you. Rich, by the way, as well. James <laughs> and yes, and James Rich. James is at the bottom of my screen, gone but not forgotten. Okay, so with that, I'm going to turn it over to Michael, and I'm going to uh, mute everyone. But you can unmute yourself, Michael. Once I do it. All right. <laughs> okay. Can you guys still hear me? All right. Yes, perfectly. Okay, great, great. Yeah, thank you for that uh, warm introduction, Paula. Um, again, my name is Michael Tarantino. Uh, if you don't know, I live in Atlanta, Georgia. And Oops, it, I mute yourself. It unmuted you. I'm sorry. Ah. You can unmute uh, Can you yourself. hear me now? Yes, please. All right, all right. So starting over, uh, again, my name is Michael Tarantino. I'm uh, with Full Steam. I've been with Full Steam going on four years now. Uh, the neat thing is I've been in uh, the credit card processing market for a very long time, going on 25 years. Uh, so I'm, I'm very versed in, uh, the do's and don'ts of how credit card processing works, uh, interchange levels, uh, fees, understanding statements and best practices for a, a lot of the marketplace and, and different verticals. Uh, I also wanted to take a moment and have uh, Brandon introduce himself as well. Uh, before we jump on uh, and go through this presentation. Hello again. Uh, for those that don't know, my name is Brandon Edley. I am based in Tulsa, Oklahoma right now, originally from Dallas, Texas, and uh, I'm the head of product marketing here at LA. Um, I've worked for Lone Anywhere as head of product before and I've picked up some fintech or some uh, financial sort of experience along the way. When I'm not product marketing, as you heard, I'm preparing for a uh, my new daughter writing music and spending time with my family. Excellent, thank you, Brandon. Uh, so uh, we we have a couple slides put together for everyone. I promise this won't be very painful and very very long. Uh, the idea is just to give you a, a brief overview of uh, our vision at uh, Full Steam and Limo Anywhere, uh, why we're doing this, uh, some some product features and and roadmap uh, uh, development schedules that we're working on, and more importantly, how this is going to affect uh, your business and the, your partnership and our partnership with with you as we move forward with LA Pay. Um, so with that, uh, I'll jump into the, the first slide here. Let me see if this works correctly. And that uh, seems to be working correctly. So you know, at Full Steam, uh, we're, we're not just a payment processor. We are a software techno uh, software company and a technology company that specializes in acquisitions uh, of software uh, software businesses across various different industries. Our goal is to provide our portfolio companies like Limo Anywhere with a comprehensive payment infrastructure that's really tailored towards your needs. So that's really illustrated here in this, in this slide that you see. Uh, this... Uh, all these different features and programs that you're seeing on your screen now have really been homegrown and developed with uh, Limo Anywhere uh, because they understand your needs and what you're trying to place. And wow. they really came to us and said, hey, this is important for our clients. This is how we need to develop our program. So everything was really designed from the ground up uh, and customized for the Limo Anywhere uh, Limo Anywhere customer base. Uh, so this same functionality doesn't work with uh, some of the other portfolio companies that Full Steam has acquired. So like I said, this is really homegrown and it's been in the marketplace for over a year now. Uh, we have a lot of our clientele 
uh, with the, that have been using limo anywhere for years uh, already using LA pay. Uh, so this is nothing that you're going to be beta testing. Uh, and full steam at, at a corporate level also does uh, more than 11 billion transactions a year and uh, with more than 20,000 uh, merchants. So uh, full steam has a, a lot of buying power in the marketplace and, uh, and the transaction flow has been working flawlessly for many, many years. So this is the backbone is strong. And I think what Limo Anywhere has really brought to the table is really focused on providing uh, good functionality for you, uh, our customers, and quality of life improvements on uh, on different software aspects going to really enhance what you're doing uh, in the limo market. So some of the items I want to call out here uh, are just highlight specifically. I know which are, you know, it's very important to you guys, especially is going to be the pricing that you see here. Uh, the pricing is going to be very competitive. Uh, we do not want this to be more expensive than what you're paying today. Uh, we really mean that we were going to either meet or beat your current pricing. Uh, so if you have statements, we want to look at those statements. Uh, we wanted to uh, give you a true apples to apples comparison of what you're paying today, what you'll be paying with Limo Anywhere. Uh, and we'll, we'll go over those numbers with you in detail so that, that makes uh, sense to you. Um, but uh, there has not been one Limo Anywhere client that has uh, sent statements over that we weren't able to uh, at least meet their current program uh, or, or provide them some a little bit of savings or some, in some cases, um, there was a lot of savings. Uh, with Century, we're not seeing uh, too, a lot of savings because the pricing is pretty good. But we're like I said a, a couple minutes ago, we want this to be a win-win for you. Uh, so this should not be more expensive than what you're paying today. The other highlight I want to point out is uh, support. This is kind of the key cornerstone of, of what we're really excited about over at Limo Anywhere in Full Steam. Uh, you call one company for help. Uh, make that one phone call to the Limo Anywhere team. They can help you with both payments, software, and gateway support. Uh, so they're going to be able to see what's happening in Limo Anywhere. They're going to be able to see what's happening in Merchant Track, which is the, the payment side. And they're going to be able to uh, guide you, help you with any kind of uh, issues that you might have uh, and on any three of those products. So in the past, you might have to make several different phone calls. So if you had a, a different gateway, a different payment processor, and a software company, you might if you'd have to call three different companies to find out what what, what the issue would have been um, or try to treat that yourself. In this scenario, you call us and we'll be able to see everything and provide a quick and fast resolution so you can get back to doing what's important to you, which is making money. Uh, some of the other functionalities uh, Brandon is going to be speaking to, uh, really the, the important one I want to highlight is the request to pay. So we have a couple of slides for that. Uh, and then uh, lastly, I'm going to go over uh, the merchant track, uh, which I just brought up briefly. It's our merchant dashboard, uh, and you'll be able to see a couple slides on that as well, which I'll go ahead and bring up on the screen. Uh, so this is our, our merchant track. It's our integrated um, dashboard inside Limo Anywhere. So you do not need to go to a third-party website to pull this up. Uh, you'll be able to access our, our gateway information, our payment information inside Limo Anywhere, which is very neat. So you don't have to remember different passwords or remember how to log in or remember a different website to go to. Everything's in one spot. You'll be able to pull up your statements, your funding reports, your batch reports, uh, everything that uh, you need to find in one centralized place inside Limo Anywhere. And then if you need help or coaching on how to access different reports or run a specific port, uh, report inside Limo Anywhere, like I, noted, uh, like I noted before, you just call the Limo Anywhere support team. They can help you with this, this dashboard as well. Uh, everyone at the Limo Anywhere team has access to this dashboard and I, they can actually see everything that you see as a business and help run help you and show you how to run those reports as well. So it really enhances uh, the customer service and the support aspect, like I noted before. You know, personally, uh, I really think that uh, this integrated dashboard and being able to access 
everything in one centralized place. That's the kind of that that's the cornerstone of what we're bringing to the table. It's really going to help streamline your business, provide a huge quality of life um, as far as uh, being able to get everything you need at your fingertips and then get back to doing what's important to you. And like I said that before, just that's making money and, and growing your business. So. And I'm going to turn this over to Brandon now because we're going to talk about some of the features and highlights that we just noted. So, Brandon. Hey, thanks, Mike. Um, so our LA Pay integration uh, has some pretty powerful features that allow you to increase your authorization amounts by percentages you control. So um, in, in the event where you have, uh, like this shown here, you have a, a $100 a reservation charge. That's the total of the reservation. Well, you could go in and uh, tell your system to run a a, a percentage addition to your uh, charge. So uh, you know you don't have to explain to your uh, to your employees or anybody like that. Um, you don't have to worry about incorrect data entry. Um, in this case, like I said, it was a hundred dollars. But when you run the authorization it automatically uh, wants to authorize for 120. And, and again, uh, this gives you a uh, room to ensure uh, funds are available for um, additional fees or any kind of incidentals. Um, I do want to just note that with the authorization amounts, a lot of times, you know, of course, our industry has a lot of, you know, chargebacks and, and stuff like that. We, we kind of see um, or hear stories of it. Well, you know, if you're able to authorize, you know, an amount uh, you you shouldn't try to settle for an amount that's over the authorization amount. And so this kind of uh, gets rid of that category to where chargebacks are, are coming through because you didn't get auth authorized or you didn't perform an authorization to charge them any kind of additional fees. Um, can you go to the next slide, Mike? And then uh, this next feature that we're showing here is... Um, the payment request feature. So, you know, like Lemon Money Wear and LA Pay, we take some additional steps to make sure your credit cards are securely stored and transmitted over like to the card networks. And so like, you don't have to take credit card numbers over the phone or write them down or whatever method you are using to uh, receive the uh, credit card details yourself. Um, you know, so operators can use this feature to generate an email that goes to the billing contact or the person that's responsible for paying for the service. And so um, that's kind of what, you, what you're looking at on the left side of the screen here. Um, once you send this payment request, which you could request a certain amount or it can be the amount of the trip, uh, your user or whoever is paying will get this email. It's kind of pictured in the middle. All the charges, what they're right. getting, you know, the service that they're they're actually getting and when they click the link in the email it the uh, payment portal where they can enter their credit card information enter their details and when they submit the payment info it'll actually store the card in their reservation invoice or or account um the big thing here is this is great to keep you out of scope of some types of potential fraud and it keeps you out of scope of, of uh, allowing credit card data leakage because you know truly like you're you you or your you know employees or whoever is uh, you know handling your payments they're never aware of what your user's credit card number actually is so outside of these two we have some upcoming uh, features can you go to the next slide i'll talk about those so, you know, one thing, and I think it was on, on uh, Mike's original slide, is that we're able to reinvest, you know, a, a lot of, uh, you know, funds back into um, our, our processing solution. And, and that's one of the big benefits of having an in-house payment solution. So uh, because of that, whenever our users request features, it's easy for us to stay like well ahead of them and, and stay informed of what they're specifically looking for. So um, things that we've heard from users that we are implementing in the near future are reports like card brand and, and reconciliation reports, uh, some industry exclusive features that you know, I don't believe anyone else has, like a, you know, having expired credit cards and expired customer uh, info attached to the payment data automatically update without the need for you to call them and say, hey, well, what's your new expiration date? 
you know, stuff like that. Um, and we're also working on integrating payment requests into our scheduled messaging system. Uh, that means that you can uh, send payment requests uh, request based on your own uh, reservation criteria. So, you know, maybe once the reservation is booked, you can set, you know, uh, three days before the trip or a week before, whatever the case may be, or hey, when you update it to a certain status, send this request out to make sure that we have the credit card info. So it's really powerful depending on how you run your business. On top of that, we're releasing an update that kind of integrates with the last one I mentioned pretty well, where you can completely customize the look and feel of your payment request. So uh, on that last screen, that, that middle section was sort of how we have it built, but we're making it to where you can completely uh, build it with your own uh, look and feel. And lastly, I wanna mention that there's the batch processing and automatic authorizations, which we are, uh, you know, working on figuring out how exactly that will work. Uh, but you know, that's going to allow you to set up criteria to perform one of those authorizations that has a higher percentage of uh, payment, so you can handle those things. So it'll be uh, performed on an automatic basis. And uh, yeah, also, you know, any other features that users submit in, they, they typically go to our product team and then we'll kind of work with um, our users to figure out exactly what they're looking for. Okay, uh, Michael, you can go to the next slide and I, I think we'll, we're gonna save some time for questions uh, on, on anything I talked about afterwards. Yeah, so uh, we're all, we only got a couple more slides left. So this is um, just the sign up process is pretty straightforward. Um, you, you just uh, find this page inside your limo anywhere uh, software. Uh, we can uh, give you directions on how to access this um, this information. And what this does, it allows you to send up uh, your most recent credit card processing statements. Uh, what I would recommend everyone to do is uh, set up a, uh, on the right, right hand side here, you see custom analysis. Uh, request analysis that will allow you to provide three months of pro credit card processing statements. And then what we will do is custom create a, a uh, pricing program just for you and your business. Uh, and like I said, that that's going to go back to the, uh, the meter beat that we, we promised. So we don't want this uh, to be more expensive than what you're paying. And we'll customize the program just for you. Give you those uh, individual numbers uh, create a spreadsheet for you to have and save uh, so everything's all transparent for you uh, so the next tab here just shows you what you're just going to put in your company information name email address and then you'll just upload your your statements when what would happen next is that would come over to myself and my team we'll create that custom spreadsheet for you uh, we'll send that information over to you uh, with the company profile sheet as well. So you can actually get uh, your app, uh, your application and your LA pay uh, configured on our side. And then I'll, I'll give you a call and go over uh, your, your custom numbers with you. So everything makes sense and it allows you to, to kind of dive in deeper with me uh, and understand if you want to get a, a history of credit card processing, I, I, it happens all the time. Someone wants to know uh, the best practices uh, that they can do as a business. Uh, absolutely. Uh, pick my brain. Uh, I'm here to help you from all aspects. So um, once you sign up with LA pay, I'm, I'm not going anywhere. So I'll be supporting the LA team uh, uh, for the, my entire tenure here at full, at full steam. So uh, which, which I plan on being a long time. So <laughs> Uh, with that said, let me just make sure I'm clicking the right place here. We can open this up for questions now, Paula. So I know we went over a lot and there, there's probably a lot of questions that uh, people want to review with us. I, I think I have one general one that might help everyone. Um, sure. So there's a number of folks on here that are currently with Century and we got the notice from you folks about the transition what would you recommend for a timeline for people to get started in the process? Because um, we have about 25 to 30 operators just here, and I don't know how many are with Century for sure, but um, or there may even be others who just want to switch processors. Um, in order to meet September, what, what are you guys recommending so that people don't That's get great. at the last minute? <laughs> yeah, that's a great question, Paula. Um, I, I, I can 
really see us getting just based on how things happened over the last year, mm -hmm. uh, right near the end of the the cutoff, we were just so busy and I didn't have a lot of time to spend all, spend one-on-one -on -one time with uh, people that wanted to review their custom analysis. Uh, so my recommendation is uh, start now, uh, send over the, the statements, uh, let us do that custom analysis with you, schedule some time together, get the company profile created and, and, and activated. Once we have your merchant identifier, you don't have to switch right away. You can wait till uh, the beginning of August, say if we get it done this week and which, you know, this week's this month's almost over, uh, say we get it done in, in August, early August, you don't have to switch over till uh, September 1st, or you can switch over at the, in the middle of September, you can pick that go live date. Um, but normally it takes about a week or two to get, uh, go from uh, statement analysis, uh, custom review application and company profile created about a week uh, to two weeks to get that process done. So that's why I recommend let's get start, let's get started right away. Uh, send the stuff over uh, and then we can take our time reviewing everything together instead of being in a rush to get it done in, uh, in, in September. Yeah, it's kind of deliberate because that's why I brought it up. I know that um, usually August is somewhat busy for some people and others it's completely insane. So I want to make sure that people leave themselves enough time to go through the process with you guys and not, not feel stressed about, you know, waiting till the beginning of September and all that. Um, I hope that was helpful. Um, yeah, that's a great question. Okay. So uh, we have a couple of questions here. Uh, the first one was from Tim. Let me pull that up. I'm just trying to get back on my screen here. Let's see. Uh, I have to get to a standard view because it's throwing me off here. All right. Let's see. My computer. I can ask a question. Would you mind? Because it's, oh, here it is. Okay. okay go ahead, Tim. So, so the, the question I have is, you know, through our various Facebook groups, uh, there have been people that have experienced chargebacks and they have felt that the lack of support that they have received during the chargeback process has been less than stellar. Um, I, I don't know what the process is for a chargeback because fortunately I've never had to deal with one in the 15 years that I've been in business. But uh, what, what kind of support can we expect to receive from LA and LA pay uh, during the chargeback process should we find ourselves in that process? That's a great question, Tim. Uh, so, uh, we actually have a, a live team in Tennessee, uh, not Tennessee, in Alabama that uh, works the chargeback uh, queue. Uh, we have uh, real people that you can actually call, get on the phone, talk to them. Uh, you can email them. If you prefer email methods, you can just email them information and they'll respond to you. It's uh, it's go It goes through a ticketing system. So any communication that you have is saved, stored, and we can uh, access that information at any time. If there's uh, any question, any additional questions or concerns later on, even six months down the road. Um, so that all, all that information is, is uh, open to you. So I do recommend that you, if you do get a chargeback and you haven't had one in 15 years, Maybe you make that phone call to our, our chargeback team and get the best practice on how you can answer that uh, that chargeback and and provide the necessary information to put you in a good position uh, to, to win those chargebacks. And then also, uh, I would recommend talking to Mike Blackburn when you're at the show next week. Um, uh, add-ons, uh, if you haven't heard, uh, Full Steam and add-ons in LA and Limo Anywhere are, are now one company. Uh, add-ons is providing a lot of features, a lot of functionality uh, to uh, the chargeback process that it's going to empower you, uh, the business owner, to position yourself in a place where you can win more chargebacks. Uh, if you do see, yeah, some of our, our clients see uh, more than uh, uh, more than one chargeback a month, and some don't see them uh, for years on, on end. So it just really depends on uh, what your what your business model is like and what you're seeing from your clientele. Um, so if you're not seeing, Tim, if you're not seeing chargebacks uh, once, uh, you know, every 15 years, um, maybe you don't need that information from Mike Blackburn, but if you're seeing them more often, then I would recommend getting that information from Mike, Mike uh, from Blackburn 
implementing those additional features that add-ons provides, and then having those additional conversations with our support team. Oh. And and I you know and I do use leak workflows. Of course, there is a waiver process, IP addresses, little scribble signatures, you know, are included. But you know that that may be something worth worthwhile to have a, a class or something like that with an LA and LA pay on some best practices what we can do to mitigate chargebacks should we find ourselves in that in that process. I mean, apparently, I have a good support. Uh, which is why I haven't had a, a chargeback, but that's something that we, uh, you know, I, I think would be a, a great subject for us to cover is. Yeah, that's a great LA suggestion, us. Tim. In fact, we are, in, in Josh and James will attest to this, we're actually creating a, a pretty large right. amount of content that we'll be pushing over the course of the next six to 12 months around um, best practices or with respect to chargebacks, uh, as well as enhancing our, our capabilities in managing disputes. Um, as you just said, you know, every chargeback uh, may need to be treated differently depending upon the code and what's required and what's needed to be submitted. And so making that process more intuitive so that your business is staying aligned with what the expected information is to be sent is something that technology can definitely help. But there's also just the general awareness of the different types, how to avoid them, what the typical processes are for the different uh, codes that are assigned um, is, is definitely something we want to continue to educate the market on. And we'll be putting a lot of content out there on that. Right. And just to add to what Sean was saying, you know, from the product side, whenever uh, things like chargebacks happen, you know, to, to Sean's point, they are there. There are specific reasons. Right. So typically they give us some kind of reason code or something like that. And so on the product team, we sort of review these things. And if there's something that we could do or add to our system or implement that will either prevent or make our users more aware of like how to how to stop these things, then, uh, you know, we're, we're adding those things as we um, evaluate the data that we get back. So, you know, we are, work, we work very closely with, you know, uh, LA Pay and, and the full steam team. So whenever these chargebacks happen, you know, we do get reports of, of, you know, why they happened and like the amounts and, and that really enables us to make changes that. that okay. Good to hear. Yeah. 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 I have, I have another, I have another question that is somewhat related. But not really. Okay, then Paul, we can ask that question. Go ahead. Yes, you can. Okay. So, so from some users that have switched previously um, from their previous processor, whether that be Chosen or Century or you know whatever, they were with Authorized.net, their local bank, whatever. Um, within uh, you know within Limo anywhere, they had stored uh, the credit card information. And they are finding that when they switch over from XYZ payment processor to LA Pay, that the uh, the data, uh, the credit card data that they save is not being kept uh, in place there. So they're having to go back after making the, the transition to LA Pay. They're having to go back, go to those clients, and ask them for credit card payment information all over again. And this may be something you know. Furthermore, for like Mike Blackburn, some people that are using the quote close if they're booking a round trip uh, reservation, you know, the, the data is not being transferred from, you know, both the, the, the departure and, you know, then to the arrival. It's only populating in, in one of the reservations and it's creating some somewhat of a problem uh, with the second reservation when they try to go to like payment. They don't have the payment information within that second rate. The, the second reservation that may be more of a an add-ons thing but really it's you know are are we going to be able to keep the credit card data that we have already within the system you know with the previous processor and it will transition over sle seamlessly to la pay or is that or are we going to have to go back to our clients and get new payment information so great question tim um James, do you want to grab that one? Yeah, I could take a stab at this. Um, yeah, thank right. you for letting me uh, have a chance to talk here. So um, in order to answer that, Tim, I just want to take a quick step back 
and kind of cover at a, a high level the difference on how we're storing credit cards today versus how cards get stored with uh, LA Pay. So LA Pay um, uses what's called tokenization. So today with your legacy payment processor, you go and you add a customer's card information. That full card number, the PAN data gets stored into Limo Anywhere's database. It's encrypted, but the card number is stored within Limo Anywhere. With tokenization, Limo Anywhere no longer stores credit card data in our database. Essentially, we get the card information from you or your customer, immediately send it to the processor. The processor stores it in their vault, and they send us back essentially an ID. And so Limo Anywhere just stores that ID on our side going forward. So what does that mean for your existing cards that you have in the system? The existing cards that you have today will work with LA Pay. However, when you go to use an existing card for the first time, that process of tokenization happens. And so now we are storing that ID and we're no longer storing the full card data on our side. So that's my, that might be what you're referring to in terms of not being able to see the full card data any longer. However, any cards that you have in your system today should work just fine. You just won't be able to see the full card number anymore going forward. Well, Does that make sense? See, not, it's not it. being able to see the full card number. It's that some people have had to go and have had to ask their customers, their clients, their you know the corporate accounts that use the same card week in and week out. They've had to go back and say, you know, we switch our, our processors, and unfortunately, we can no longer use. You know, we no longer have your credit card stored in a format that we're able to use. We need to get the credit card, in, you know, again. So if, if they are having to go back and ask for the card information again, it is, it is not because they, they don't have the card information on file. It's most likely that when they stored the card information to begin with, they didn't have the full card information. So they were missing name or address or, or um, you know, the rest of the data that's required so that when you try to process it, let's say historically, if all you did was collect the, the full 16 digit PAN, and you didn't collect address information or anything you know, aside from the, the PAN, when you go to process it, it's probably going to get a decline because LA Pay is requiring the, the additional information along with um, uh, the card number. Because just to take one step back to ask, to, to kind of touch on your previous question about chargebacks. It's a best practice. Yeah, and if you do not have that information, you are almost assuredly guaranteed to lose a charge rack, no matter what supporting documentation you have, if you do not have the address information, the supporting card uh, information as well. So when you go to process it in LA Pay, it's going to ask you for that info. So if historically you don't have it for a card, it will tell you, hey, you need to provide this information. And to acquire that, you can just do what Brandon was showing earlier, that request for payment. It'll send it off to your customer and they can securely provide it and you're done. Well, let's, let's try it a different way. Um, okay, so let's try it a different way. Say, what Tim? I was going to say, the say. funniest part about getting, getting that address information, it is the most difficult, the, the most difficult customer to extract that address information from is other limo companies. But I think that's on us to make sure we get what we need. And and I know I've been going back to some of ours. So I I, I, I know, but it's, also, but it's also an... A, an education thing and a training mm -hmm. thing within the staff when you have a reservationist from another company you know that doesn't know the billing address on the credit card that they're trying to pay you with it you know yes that, that's the most difficult thing um and real quick, when, when we first run that credit credit card verification code cvb um the, the credit you know the card verification value that information i'm assuming that we only really need it for that first transaction where then it goes and gets tokenized, correct? Correct. correct. We, we don't ever need it again, but it's being, because we have that information when it's being tokenized, that is being passed along to that ID that we're being given back. And that ID says, yeah, no, we've got this. This is a valid card, complete, you know, name matches, address matches, the CVV, you know, matches, all that, all that matches. And therefore, you know, after that initial, record we do not need to collect the credit card verification value anymore that's correct because it'll be tokenized and then the auto updater system will will kick in if so if, if that uh, client uh, either loses his credit card or the expiration expires 
uh, and they get a new credit card with a new CVV or address uh, information, uh, our auto updater system will cap uh, update the token in our in in, in inside LA Pay. Awesome. Okay. All right. Thank okay. you. So, uh, just one follow up question, and then we have a question from Jay and Natasha. Um, is there any way to be proactive on this and re and do some kind of review of the information that we're currently storing to make sure we get in front of any any information that might not be accurate or um, compliant? Am I saying it correctly? I guess I'm thinking I'm listening to you guys and we have casual we have casual customers that don't use us often and. Um, it, I'm just thinking if we could, if there's a way to be proactive and find this, these particular ones that we will have to go back and get the additional information for, or is it just as we go through? I I would suggest do it as you go through because there's going okay. to be operators that have that have been storing cards on our platform for over a decade, right? Yeah. And the reality is the majority of those cards, yeah, the, the reality is the majority of those cards you may never use again. So it's okay if those expire, because if, if you have someone that hasn't done business with you in a couple of years and they call, you know, great, they're coming back for business and they call, they're likely going to be providing you with a different card. Or a different point, expiration, anyways. yeah. Yeah, and so it, it will, you you can still use whatever the card is that you have on file, but likely if it was acquired several years ago and you don't have all the data, when you attempt to run that transaction, it may fail because it's outdated and it was missing data. At that point, you know that it just failed and you can send them the request for payment and they can securely provide it right there on the spot. Okay, um, Natasha's question. Do you want to ask it, Natasha? You can unmute yourself. Or do I mean, are they? Yeah. Um, <laughs> right. We all have those customers we haven't seen in a while, uh, a couple of years. Ten so years. sometimes 10. Um, will those credit cards automatically update only when they're going to be used again? Or will they just automatically update and I'm going to get charged for thousands of credit cards that I have in the system? Only when. Uh, so if you have thousands of cards in the system, you, you go to. Just, just like that scenario James talked about. So you're going to go run that new that card that you maybe haven't used in 10 years. We're going to try to tokenize it. Uh, you're probably going to get the new information from from the, the client at that time, the CVS and address information, and it's going to create a token. Uh, so only the new tokens are going to be applied to the auto updater. So your whole profile of 10,000 cards you might have stored away the the they're not going to be touched so it's just anything that is new that's going to be under the new tokenized system that will be will apply to that uh, auto updater system all right thank you and actually yeah. one other question is there a way to go through a way to get a report through la and get a report of you know customers that have not used us in x amount of time just to sort of clean things up get rid of certain information is there a way to do that? Yes. Yeah, the accounts or something like that. Absolutely. You can do an account export and you can set a date range on that export to uh, reservations that took place between, you know, date from and date to. And so uh, it's actually in your uh, account section. There's a tab called export customers. And so you could just back date that list and that will tell you, uh, you know, the customers that booked, but between that time, uh, there's also a report, I believe it's in the, uh, customer, it's a customer activity report that will show you all the users that have booked or that have had reservations, uh, within the past, uh, whatever time period, you can cross-reference those lists to come up with, with what you're looking for. Okay. So you get a list of business. all your customers that booked between a certain time and then okay. uh yeah and then just compare it with your um customer activity report would be a really long list but okay all right thank you mm -hmm. i i would break it um, into data increments wanna... or something because you will have a long list natasha uh you've been doing yeah, this a long yeah. time yeah. <laughs> in a while and yeah. I want to bring up just one more thing about the uh, the tokenization. Mm -hmm. um, this is something that that you know 
we're doing, and I think we're trying to stay uh, ahead of the technology, there will be a time uh, where no processors going to allow the storing of cards like we've historically have stored in the, you know, or the industry has done, you know, uh, from a technology standpoint for the past 20 years, everyone is going to go to tokenism. We're just getting, getting ahead of it. I mean, I believe, you know, they will be forced based off of like, you know, card standards and how they're stored, you know, regulations to, to do exactly what we're doing. Okay. And I think um, we had a question from Jay, and I think he was just looking for more information on the evaluation. And I think that was on your last slide, Michael, or something like that. How does he get started on, I would like to start evaluation, please provide the details. Uh, Brandon, do you want to share on how to get to the the section inside limo anywhere or, or James? Yes, absolutely. So, um, and I can go ahead and share my screen. With you Thank you. If it makes it easier. Okay, can you see my desktop now? Yes. It should yes. be Limo Anywhere. Okay, so from Limo Anywhere, you go to My Office and then go to this tab, uh, Limo Anywhere Pay. That's where you'll find the screen that uh, Michael was showing. And then from here, you could choose which plan you want with your interchange or, or just request a custom analysis. But when you hit Get Started, um, it'll bring you to some forms where you fill uh, out this data. Um, I, I do believe you want to have your three your three last statements, right, Michael? Yes, that's correct. Mm -hmm. And uh, then once you submit this, you'll go into the queue. And I think you know Michael will be able to contact you from there. Yeah, it's pretty pretty easy, straightforward. Um he actually, uh Brandon actually selected Interchange Plus, which is uh uh kind of our new customer program. Uh if you have statements, I'd re I highly recommend using custom analysis to the right. Uh, that way we can, uh, you know, match our match your pricing correctly. Uh, this is going to provide you the opportunity to, to upload your three statements right here. Uh, so the last three months is, is perf perfectly fine. Um, and then just fill out the information and it's going to come directly to our secure folder on my side. Uh, and then you'll receive an email from me with the, the custom analysis pricing and overview. And then we can schedule a call together. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Do we have any other questions for Michael or Brandon or James or Sean or Mo, Larry and Curly? Yes, Jay. Jay, um, you're not muted, but we can't hear you. I'm checking, you're not muted at all. So I'm not sure if your audio went again. Okay, all right, you're gonna type me. You'll type it. Okay, that sounds good. Type your question in and we'll we'll get to it in a minute. All right, let's see. Paul, I have a question in the meantime. Yes, please. Mind. How valid are those little scribble marks? I'm a I'm already an LA paid customer, so but how valid is that those scribble marks on the signature block? I mean, nobody can take their mouse and sign it perfect. And I mean, at this point, what is the purpose? I'm not of laughing that? at you because I was actually not... had that question too. <laughs> Uh, so that's a great question, uh, Kirk. Uh, the card brands are actually moving away from requiring a signature on uh, transactions under ten thousand dollars. So uh, that you're 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 seeing you're going to see over the next couple of years where that signature is not going to be really valid anymore. It's it's more about um, uh, making sure that you you're authorized to to sign that card, making sure that you have proof of uh, services and, and delivery. Um, to to more CYA CYA cover your 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 transaction right. cost. Uh, we have some LA driver uh, uh, clients that actually uh, store the uh, a copy of the driver's license from the clients, uh, and they they get a a confirmation 
uh, secondary confirmation page from the client saying that they authorize your business to charge client X Y Z amount. Uh, so that that's additional that 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 additional documentation when your card not present really uh, really protects your business and, and your revenue. Also, just a side note too. I'm, I mean, I work with the add-ons people, and that we have the capture and confirm section. And it's been brought to my attention um, that they in there they require you take a picture of your your ID, and I have a lot of clients that are hesitant about that. Yeah, um, and they've uploaded anything, any picture. I've had that, problem. and it's worked. <laughs> um, what is is there a um, is there a typical uh, response that we could provide somebody with of why we need that information, why we need that ID, other than you know to validate it's you without, or is there a way to you know just say you know give them sort of a warm and fuzzy feeling that you know we're not, I'm I'm not going to do anything with it, I don't even get to see it, it's all you know secure. But some people just hesitant. Yeah, so the, the the right answer would be uh, any transaction over a hundred dollars. Uh, we are required to see a photo ID, just like if you go in and make a large purchase at a, a Walmart or whatnot, you, you'd you present your ID at the time of purchase to make sure that the, that ID matches the credit card that's on file. Uh, that would be my response to that client. But their, pho their phobia is they're uploading it online and it's, you know, everybody's got access to it then. Is what it might saying. not be encrypted right. if they're uploading it. They were right. probably worried about that as well. So I've, you know, <laughs> Kirk, that's more of a, I think it's like a product thing, right? So if there needs to be a changing of language to make customers feel more secure, then that's something that, that we should definitely discuss with uh, you. Yeah, and, can there be a, re, a, a heavily reinforced point? Just, you know, this is a secure link, you know, prior to the, submitting that information that just. Yeah, I think, you're I, think right. I heard Usually secure well, link um, and warm and fuzzy and and along with yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah. yeah you, those those two things go hand in hand in my opinion because he's right i mean we run a different program and, and um and we always have to explain why we need the driver's license and it really does upset people so i used to work for the government if they want your information they're gonna have it so that's not... <laughs> well that's true too <laughs> all right I'm, yeah. i'll shut up now and I think um, we have one more question. I think Jay was asking, can you go to my, can you get the data from my current credit card processing company? I'm not sure specifically what data you're asking them if they can. Are you get. asking about your current tokens that you might have with your your current processor, Jay? Jay, you have to unmute yourself. Or just answer in chat. Yeah, or answer it in the chat, whatever's faster. Uh, history. Oh, he wants the history of the credit cards from his other company uh so the history of the credit like uh i believe you're asking if can you get your client base from your current credit card processor um mo most credit card processors have a um they will not disclose that information so if you're looking for your client's credit card information the the name and associated with that credit card on file um, that is not in a token format, then they would that that is information that they typically do not share. If you're looking to get a token from your uh, current provider, that is something that they do share, and we have a method to get that that tokenized information from them. But it would not be the uh, plain text credit card number or the clientele's. Uh, name, phone number, or address, or none of that would be disclosed. It sounds it would Jack be just a, a to client. me. I don't think they would do it either. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, if you've been processing your credit cards outside of limo anywhere, then yeah. that would be, you know, that's kind of an issue. But if you've been processing internally, you could run a, like a payment transaction history report of, and you could see all the credit cards that you've run. But again, you just can't see the full card numbers it'll be last for in association with you know the the uh the billing details but but you won't be able to see the full credit card number that would be yeah. much easier than going through the the red tape required with any processor to share data so jay you're not processing your credit cards in limo anywhere right now correct nod your head yes no up type it if you are, I was thinking the same thing as you guys were talking about it. Okay. All right. 
well, I, hopefully that was enough of an answer for you. If you are processing them, you can, uh, through them anywhere currently, you can run a report. Um, did we answer your question, Jay, for the moment? I'm getting a thumbs up. Okay, thank you. All right. Any other questions for our illustrious team? Um, okay. I'm just going to use. I, the... I, one, one quick one. One suggestion. One of the things I liked about. I used to deal with PayPal. Okay. Right? Obviously. Now I'm with LA, LA Pay. One thing I used to like with PayPal is if I clicked on their site, it gave me an instant total what I got coming to me. Now I know you can go through the whole routine and find out what's batched out or what's coming your way, but I like the idea of just going and clicking on it right on the first thing I see is, okay, you've got $2,200 coming or you've got $1,000 coming or whatever. Is it hit your account? Is there any way can we customize that ourselves, or is there any way to do that? That we have that option to set the opening page under suggestions. I guess I, I should have submitted it, but I wasn't aware there was that yeah chance or that yeah. uh, option. There, there, there's there's two things here. Um, we have had the request from merchants that were used to receiving some type of nightly or, or morning email recapping uh, everything that went through their batch. So batch with that report. in mind, we're working on something similar. Um, okay. as, as Michael touched on earlier, you can obviously pull, it'll be delivered to you guys. That's, that's one. And that's, that's LA pay specific Two, I think is more, um, this is on the product side in general. Uh, Brandon's team is working on a, uh, an updated dashboard. And it sounds like that may be something like all pending transactions that value right there yeah may be useful to put on that dashboard. So two different yeah, ways. I mean, because obviously with PayPal, you then had to transfer that balance or whatever you wanted to transfer over. Yeah. But it was just nice to see that. OK, that's what I got coming without yeah. fishing through a bunch of reports. So that's all I was asking. Great. Yeah. I'm used to that. Too. Yeah. And, and 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 one other thing that. that Granted, we, we, we glossed over some of the stuff that are upcoming on the roadmap. Brandon touched on this earlier, but one of the items on there was a reconciliation report. Um, it, it, you might be familiar with our, our RNA reporting and analytics engine. We're coming out with some specific reporting tools for that, which will tie in directly to LA Pay, which could also be used to generate the same information you're talking about. And in the future, uh, RNA reports, uh, we will be introducing the ability to schedule those reports. So you know, there's there's three or four ways to attack this, but the answer to your question is is probably a resounding yes. No matter, it just depends on how you want to attack it. All right, great, thank you. Yep. I have a question. Um, sure. So I noticed that there's a monthly cost, and and traditional, I guess, merchant services always have a monthly cost. Uh, my service at this time does not, and hasn't for the past whatever, eight years I've been in business. So what, uh, why would I transition over? What are the benefits to transition over at this time? So at, for pricing, Patty, uh, we send those statements over. Uh, we'll take a look at it. We'll get the pricing manager to do a side-by-side -side comparison. Like I said, um, during the, the, the couple slides that we showed, we don't want this to be more expensive than what you're paying today. So we want this to be a win-win for you. And Pricing is, uh, I know it's important for everyone on this call. So it's, uh, this is not going to be more expensive than what you're paying today. So uh, we'll put that in writing and, and get that to you in a spreadsheet. So you have it uh, documented. Okay. And I don't know if you would know this. This is something that I've recently uh, come across and I've reached out to my provider, which is the only reason why I'm really looking further into LA pay. Um, a corporate client of mine is running into being able to correlate an invoice uh, or a paid receipt with his statement. And it's difficult because the dates, you know, sometimes I run payments uh, on a weekly basis. So the date is not the same day as the service date. Um, so although I have put the reservation number anywhere and everywhere that I can, it's not showing up on his credit card statement. So it's difficult for him to, without going to the extra steps, to correlate that invoice with uh, his credit card statement. Do you know if that's something that 
LA Pay uh, provides, because that would be a game changer for me as my, <laughs> at this point. Or, or at least have a, like a, a service date on the yes, payment. I agree. Anything that but, would but, correlate. But ultimately, what you're, what you're talking about is the difference between level three data getting passed and level two data getting passed. Level two data doesn't have invoice numbers or reservation numbers, but level three data should. Much like when you book a, a, a flight with Southwest, it will tell you on your credit card statement that you were booking that flight from Midway to Boston. Um, and, and the guys with LA pay may correct me, but I am pretty confident that you guys are going to pass level three data. That's going to include that information. Correct. That is hundred percent correct. Tim. Uh, LA that pay will supports show up. all three levels. So that um, will show up on the client's credit card statement, not just the invoices or receipts, but the actual credit card statement. So we, we do pass all the data. It will depend on the actual card and uh, the, the card brand. The, the, there's, the, there's many different classifications of what levels the cards will fall into. We mm -hmm. have the capability on any transaction. If it meets level two or level three, we will pass all the data that we have along to it. But depending on the type of card and how it's classified, it may or may not show up on their statement. But that is out of our control and out of the processor's control. It's really dependent on the card itself. Right. If the card supports it, yes, it will. Got it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. and I just wanted to I, I'd have to think that you may not be paying a monthly fee, but you're paying for it somewhere else. Because I can't, I mean, like I said, I've been with LA Pay since the beginning of the year. I haven't had any issues, and this is no no, you know, paid endorsement, I guess you could say. Unless you feel like crediting my account, that's fine. But <laughs> um, yeah, I know they saved me, they, they didn't save me a ton, but they saved me a, enough to make, you know, say it was the smart way and and the time saver that it's it, it has been, you know, it's I couldn't, you know, that's priceless to me. So I, like I said, you, you they may not be paying you up front, but they'll break it down and show you costs that, you know, I'm sure that you'll be happy. Thank what you. is, what is that monthly gateway fee or whatever you want to call it with LA pays $25, $30, $10. No, it's our own integrated solution. So we don't have a separate, a separate gateway fee or transactional fee with the gateway. Yeah, but there's, but there is a monthly fee, right? Uh, for our new customer sign up, it's uh, it's nineteen ninety nine a month. Okay. So that, I mean, it's that's all inclusive of everything, which which may be broken down with your current provider. You may have separate line items. That's all inclusive of everything under our uh, basically under the umbrella, including next day funding, um, and anything else. And so this this is kind of to go back to the, the importance of why Michael was stressing the. Uh, providing the statements, you know, we, he, he's done these analysis on, you know, close to 2000 merchants now, and you would be very surprised on the number of merchants that say, there's no way you can, you know, even come close to what I'm paying today, or I'm not paying X or Y. Mm -hmm. And then we get the statements. And when he provides the analysis, you can see that, like you, like you said, Tim, you may not be paying it over here in X, but you're definitely paying it over here in Y or Z category. So provide those yeah. statements. And and Michael's been in it for 25 years. He'll find it. Yeah, and I was going to say, if, it, if it's $20, you know, if that fee is $20, if you're processing $10,000 in credit cards a month, you know, that if LA Pay is able to come in and drop your, you know, the percentage that you're being charged on credit cards from 3.5 down to 3.3, that's your break even point. So mm -hmm. if they're able to, you know, $10,000 of the processing, if they're able to drop it down, you know, just a few tenths of a, of a percent, um, that will end up making up the, the, the difference in that, that charge. I also think you have to think about the labor costs because if you're processing outside of limo anywhere, there's definitely a labor cost that's different than when you're processing within the platform. So there's a few other little items, I think, Caddy, that you have to- Well, I'm using, a, I'm using a gateway. I'm using a gateway at this time. So mm -hmm. it, it's transitioning through limo anywhere, which is great. Right. Um, but yeah, I'll definitely take a look at that. Do you know what gateway you're you're using right now, Patty? Is it like authorized.net or it's it's uh square. Square. Okay. Got it. Yeah, so squares typically 
3.5 plus uh, 3.5 percent and then i think 15 or 20 cents per transaction so mm -hmm. based on what we've seen so far the merchants that have converted from square there's been a decent amount of savings there sounds good yeah i i just took out my statement when they broke down <laughs> it i was currently paid prior to switching over i was currently paying 29 dollars subscription payment and I got down to like you said nineteen ninety nine. So I saved ten bucks even off of that. Yeah, so. uh, and and not 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 to say that this is a usual occurrence here, but we've had merchants where Michael has literally been able to save them enough to where they can go out and add to their fleet based on what <laughs> they save. Merchants that have been with their current processors for well over a decade and thought, you know, I, I'm getting a good rate. They don't bother me. I don't bother them. Everything's working. And then you look right. at their actual breakdown. There's significant savings to be had. Oh, wow. That's the first I've heard that fleet. Thing, no. <laughs> fleet yeah, the fleet, I, I, the fleet I, comments I, new to me, but I, I I trust James. I'm sure he's seen it. Oh, my yeah, God. I've seen the numbers uh, on some yeah. of our some of our clients, and it was just astounding that uh, uh, some of them, just highway robbery. I was like, wow, this is just, this is, this is bad. We need, I need you. I, I called the, I called the business owner up. So do you need to stop what you're doing and switch right now? <laughs> well, and even, even then, I mean, you know, it was something that I discussed with a credit card processor here just a year ago. Um, you know, some of these processes that we've dealt with have had rate creep and they just slowly, you know, it's, yeah. it's the, they were the frog in the boiling pot of water. And if we sat there and we, we do it to ourselves, to our clients, you know, if you slowly increase the rate, if you go from, you know, 3.00 to 3.02 to 3.05 to 3.07, you know, over the course of time, you don't notice that because, hey, it's, it's in line with what I had last month. But if they were to jump it from 3.0 to 3.5, obviously we'd notice that. And it is, I mean... We, they, we've just been victims of rate creep throughout the years and didn't even realize it in a lot of cases. And, you know, we, we do that when we work with our own clients. I mean, if we increase our rate from, you know, from $75 to, you know, $100, oh, oh what, do you, what did you do? But if it went from $75 to $78 to $81 over the course of five years up to, you know, 110 they wouldn't even notice that as much as the 75 to 100 Right. Yeah, th those, those, uh, uh, inflation increases are, are minor. So, uh, some some of these uh, processors aren't that are not partnered with uh, software companies like Limo Anywhere. Um, even uh, some of the ones like uh, that Limo Anywhere has partnered with over the last couple of years, they they haven't been bad. But if you use a, a third party that isn't partnered with Limo Anywhere, uh, there's no control mechanisms in place, and and they they'll do that those random increases that Tim is talking about, where it's like wow. This is a huge increase, and um, that those are the ones that I've seen that I, I that I, I just don't understand how um, how they can get away with doing stuff like that. So it's it's it's, it's disheartening, and it, it makes me look bad because I've been in this marketplace for twenty five years. All right, I'm going to shut down the questions unless there's any others. Um, I'm going to make one comment though. Um, if you haven't, if for those of you who have not registered for the Great Lakes Transportation Show, I need to see you register. Um, that's uh, it's it's going to be a great opportunity for all of you to get some education, and we have uh, got some great sessions planned. You probably have seen all of the uh, notices that have been coming out with the agenda. Um, it is the first and second of August. <clears throat> it's local for some of you that are on here. Um, and uh, if you have any questions about the show content or anything, you can ask me or Lynn um, uh, and, and we'll be happy to answer them. Our art's on here too. Uh, but I would really encourage you, uh, especially if you're not typically going to any other education sessions or anything else uh, throughout the year, this is going to replicate much of what you see uh, in the larger shows and brings it right into your backyard. Um, can't ask for more than that. And then you get to maybe meet Captain Kirk too. Maybe. 
And Tim will be and Tim. And Tim will be there. Yep. And Tom. <laughs> and Travis. Yeah. I mean, I'm psyched. Lynn and I will be there. I think if anything else, you should come just because Lynn and I will be there. So there you go. There you go. If you have any questions about the event, please uh get a hold of me or um anyone on the board or post it in the Facebook group and we'll help you out. All right. Michael, Brendan, James. Oh, Brendan already left us. I think he had enough. Uh, thanks, guys. I really appreciate you doing this. And I know, <laughs> this is something I said. Um, I know that uh, a lot of our members who couldn't make it will be watching our recording. For the rest of you, you know how this goes. Uh, the recording will be available uh, either at the end of today or first thing in the morning. You'll get a notice to, to find the link. Thank you again. Everybody have a fantastic day. Thank you, everyone. It was a pleasure seeing everybody. Appreciate it. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Take care.